Let's Talk Property. Singapore's property guru posted a 17% rise in revenue in the fourth quarter. The number missed analyst estimates with Singapore being the top revenue contributor. But the property tech company managed to slash quarterly losses. Joining us for an exclusive interview, CFO Joe Dish. Joe, good to have you with us. I'm wondering for Q1, Q2, how much clarity is there given the very uncertain environment, rising rates and of course uh, economic slowdown? Um, hello, and thank you very much for having me on today. Um, yeah, look, we're very bullish um, into next year. Uh, we have some really strong thematic tailwinds. Uh, we have urbanization, uh, middle class expansion, and rising GDP. And these, I think, will offset some sort of short term issues uh, regarding uh, inflation and interest rates. You know, we've got a really good product, and uh, fully we're, we're really delivering for our customers. But high rates affect consumption. High rates affect mortgage levels. I'm just wondering why are you still optimistic and what kind of demand are you anticipating then? So in Singapore, Singapore is doing very, very well um, economically. Um, it's a very attractive place to invest. And there's still a huge amount of sort of, sort of uh, I guess, sort of local demand here, um, which is really exciting. Uh, what we're seeing in Singapore is there's just a shortage of supply. Um, so prices, even though transaction volumes are down, uh, we're still seeing um, a significant amount of demand and therefore prices are going up. As everyone's noticed, the uh, rental market is also very, very, uh, uh, very, very strong at the moment. Uh, we are seeing some more uh, supply coming on, so that'll then drive transaction volumes. But we're still seeing a lot of demand and it's very, uh, very lively in that market. How much demand are you seeing from uh, Chinese investors and Chinese buyers? The Chinese have traditionally been uh, the largest uh, foreign buyers in Singapore property market. I mean, has there been an increase? Uh, yeah, there certainly has. Um, I think sort of so far that's been relatively muted and it's largely at the, t at the top end. That often uh, captures some of the headlines. Um, there's obviously uh, significant additional buyer stamp duty, which can put some foreign investors off. I think moreover, what we see really is just local demand uh, being really strong. Uh, you know, it's an attractive place. Obviously, everyone needs a place to live. Um, and also, it's a you know, great place to invest. So it's really that local demand that's sort of uh, that's driving prices up at the moment. Joe Rich in Hong Kong, so I'll ask you a question about uh, Hong Kong. And uh, of course, three years, just a mass mandate just coming to an end yesterday. And we've seen, of course, the property market in, uh, uh, in a southerly direction. What are you seeing, though? Um, no, Hong Kong is not somewhere where we, we, have, a, we have a business. Um, we, do, uh, we do have some interests there. And uh, we have an, an awards business where we do uh, engage with the developers in that, in that broader region. Look, I, I think, you know, I think across all our markets, uh, you know, we do have this sort of dampening effect um, around sort of inflation and interest rates. Uh, but fundamentally, you know, we believe across the broader region uh, that prices will remain relatively stable. There may be some sort of local impacts. Uh, I think some of our markets in, in Vietnam, for example, we've seen some local uh, sort of government intervention. And in Singapore, you see government intervention as well to try and dampen demand. Um, and Hong Kong as well may well have some sort of short-term impacts. But ultimately, uh, property as an asset class is very attractive. Uh, in the longer term, you know, we remain very bullish across the region. Now, you're actually uh, uh, looking at, uh, you know, the technology suppliers here as well. Uh, you know, it, I suppose you get data all the time that you have to, uh, have to crunch here. Uh, you know, at the end, are you seeing any transition uh, because of the higher interest rate environment that pe more people are renting than buying and the like? Yes, yeah, certainly. With, I mean, as I mentioning before about the, uh, the rental market in, in Singapore, it's been, uh, it's been very, very lively indeed. Um, some of the headlines around, you know, significant um, sort of price rises. Um, so definitely, I think, you know, in an uncertain environment, people do certainly move to renting. Uh, there are other factors as well there, um, just around uh, sort of supply not being quite where it should be, delays in construction, etc. Um, but overall, look, we're seeing really you know, good levels of interest. I, th I think what we find in these more uncertain times is consumers are, are quite cautious. Uh, they want more data, more content, and that's where a site like Property Guru does very well. Uh, you know, we invest a lot in, uh, in, in content and being able to guide people to the right properties. And we have a, a finance site, Property Guru Finance, which helps people to find the right mortgages, uh, which can often be a challenge uh, in this sort of turbulent times with rates. Yeah, I I indeed. So, you know, what what's the next big thing? How, how do you expand here, uh, Joe? You know, what, what are your plans there and what are the new products you're looking at too? Yeah, look, we're looking, um, we just uh, started into fintech and data. Um, so we have two small sort of fledgling businesses there. On the fintech side, we have a mortgage broking business um, in Singapore. So that's, um, that's going well. We're also investing in growing a whole sort of uh, suite of data products uh, across the whole region, which doesn't really exist right now. 
Uh, we're also focused on home services. Um, so we made a, an acquisition of a company called Send Helper uh, in, in Singapore, uh, which provides it's like an aggregation in a marketplace for aircon services, home cleaning, etc. So that's really interesting for us. Uh, so we're looking for other businesses like that. Um, we also look for developer operating uh, software as well. Um, you know, we're at the very start of this digitization process uh, in Southeast Asia around the property infrastructure. So uh, there's a, you know, a lot of potential interest there. We obviously have $300 million on our balance sheet um, and we've got a team in place now on the corp dev side to be able to start looking at opportunities and uh, yeah, make some strong acquisitions. $300 million ain't too shabby. I just want to follow up on uh, the prices for property. I mean, we talked about the rental market as well as the buyer's uh, market. I'm just wondering, in terms of uh, the increase, we've seen anything from 20 to 50 percent, some even say a doubling of rental prices. Where do you see that going? And in terms of uh, the buyers, how much more can they expect to pay? Yeah, well, the rental side's really interesting. I think you know, the, uh, you, there's a lot of headlines around uh, sort of returning expats and people from other countries that Underlying, it's really local demand. Uh, so a lot of people had their new apartments delayed, uh, whether that's built to order um, or whether that's private developments. There was a lack of construction workers and construction materials. So that's put a, quite a stress onto the property market. People have had to, uh, these things have been delayed, so they've moved to the rental market. And that's certainly sort of driven up uh, demand and therefore prices. Um, but we're definitely seeing more supply coming on now. Uh, so as that comes on, uh, you know, we'll start to see prices moderate. Um, but I think you know, the rental market will remain pretty strong. Um, it's great for landlords, and less so for others, but for, for the foreseeable future. So what's your key concern? What's the main worry for you? What's the key challenge? You've been really optimistic. Yeah, no, I'm feeling very optimistic. Um, I'm trying our best to, uh, to look after the things that we, we can control. You know, obviously, you know, the, the markets and sort of the stock market and stock markets, um, instability is something we can't control. Government intervention um, and uh, interest rates, etc. we can't. Um, you know, as a business, we just focus on the things that we can do. So we try to execute. I'm really, um, you know, excited around data and fintech, two of our fledgling businesses. It's very exciting when you're growing from, uh, from zero to, to, to create something. So I think that's, uh, those are the things that are keeping me excited. Joe, thank you so much for joining us. Joe Jish, Chief Financial Officer at Property Guru Group.